Connor Bernard is very likely to be the best first overall pick that we've seen since Connor McDavid all the way back in the 2015 NHL draft. But with just a few days to go until the NHL draft lottery and 11 NHL teams in contention for Bedard, which teams need him the most, which teams do not deserve him whatsoever, make sure you watch till the end because we're going to be breaking down every single team fit and hit that subscribe button for more daily hockey content and prospect content just like this. You will not want to miss it, especially leading up to the 2023 NHL draft. Now, I honestly have a lot of hot takes here because we have 11 different NHL teams that have the chance of Connor Bedard. Obviously, some teams have a much better chance than others with the Ducks having 25.5% chance compared to the Vancouver Canucks 3%. But any of these teams are in contention for one of the best prospects in the last decade. But let's start out here at number 11. And in my opinion, the team that deserves and needs Connor Bedard the least, and that is the St. Louis Blues. They're in a pretty unique situation here where they did have a disappointing year, but all things considered their center situation is still really really solid and especially on that four group yes Bedard would obviously be nice but I don't think they need it to still be a good team when you look at the Blues right now even though their offense isn't amazing you still got Thomas you still got Shen as centerman and again Bedard would be nice but you already got center prospects in the system like Zach Dean who they acquired in the Ivan Barbashev trade as well as Zachary Bulduke so it's not a huge need and even though it'd be nice I feel like they're the team that would still be fine without him the most Next up, moving on to number 10, the team that actually has an underrated chance at Connor Bedard in that first overall pick in the Washington Capitals. They have a 6% chance at Bedard, and it's actually pretty interesting. But you look at their center lineup and what they have going for them, even though Kuznetsov might not be there after the offseason, you're still going to have Backstrom and Strom there and two excellent seeds when they're healthy. So even though Washington is a team that might be on the way down and still has a lot of moves to make, I don't think Bedard is one they necessarily need. And you also consider the prospect pool and Henrik Sapir and Connor McMichael, two guys that they could play C, especially in that bottom six. And I think the Caps will be just fine without Bedard, even though obviously it would still be very nice. Now, moving on to number nine, a team that some people might be surprised to have this low, but I think their center situation in the future would be perfectly fine without Bedard and would actually be very, very solid. And that's the Arizona Coyotes. Now, if Arizona, Bedard going there would be monstrous. I mean, having him on this four group would be fantastic. But to me, with what they've drafted recently, I still think they'll be in a fine position. You, of course, got Logan Cooley, who's the best prospect in hockey right now that has been drafted. He's going to be absolutely electric. You also got Connor Geeky, who I'm not the biggest fan of, but I could still see turning into a solid middle 6C. And even if you don't want to have Nick Schmaltz as a center, you still got guys coming up, of course, with Barrett Hayton as well already there. And to me, three centers for the future that will be great. First line, second line, and third line guys in Cooley. Barrett Hayden and Connor Geeky. So even though Bedard would be amazing and would be such a cool fit, especially in year one for the Coyotes and would maybe get them out of the trenches franchise wise, I still think the Coyotes could be just fine and could still be competitive in the future without it. But I'll be honest, Bedard with Clayton Keller, I'm interested. I wouldn't hate it. Now, here's where we start to get into teams that would extremely benefit from getting Connor Bedard in that first overall pick. And next up, coming into this next spot at number eight, I have the Detroit Red Wings. Now, this is a unique situation that Detroit finds themselves in. When we look at their center situation, you got Larkin, you got Cobb, you got Valeno, and you got, of course, Marco Casper coming up. But to me, I think Detroit is in huge need of that first line amazing elite, elite center. Dylan Larkin has proved that he's been fantastic. But I think if you could have him as a second line center, that would be especially ideal in a Stanley Cup winning team. I think you could have Bedard as that first line juggernaut offensive guy. Maybe have Larkin as more of a reserve second line guy, perhaps. I'm not sure what they end up going for. But to me, I think that center situation for Detroit would be amazing if they did do that. You could probably have Marco Casper as a third line center, maybe even Kopp as a fourth line guy. But I think for Detroit, even though they don't need him, I think with the way this rebuild is and how stagnant Detroit kind of is at this point, Bedard would be an excellent win for them. And some draft lottery luck has to come at some point, right? Probably not, but for Red Wings fans, you can sure hope. Now moving next up to number seven and the 17 that deserves Connor Bedard the most. This is an interesting spot for me to put this team in. We've heard so many storylines about how cool it would end up being. And at number seven, I have the Vancouver Canucks. Now, this team would be a lot higher if it weren't for Elias Pettersson being Elias Pettersson and being one of the best sentiment in the entire NHL. That kind of makes it less of a need in my opinion. And I think for Vancouver, they'll still be fine. But you look at the rest of the center group uh, with the Bo Horvat trade and it's not great. Not very great at all. 
I don't know why I unlocked my inner Shaggy there, but the Canucks are in an interesting spot where their center situation isn't all too great, and the only center prospect they really have is Radu, and I mean, I think he could be a fine second-line center, but I think for Vancouver, having Bedard Pedersen one-two punch would be brilliant, and that would be the type of draft luck that they need. Now, they don't really need it compared to some other teams, but it would really be nice, and it would give Vancouver so much more momentum, and the hometown story would be amazing, too. Now moving on to number six, and this might be my hottest take of all here, and I said there was going to be some hot takes, I was not lying. But coming in at number six, and the team that deserves Conor Bedard the sixth most, it's actually the team with the best odds for Conor Bedard in the Anaheim Ducks. Now let me cook with this for a second. You look at the Anaheim Ducks in their depth chart and what they got center-wise. You, of course, got Trevor Zegers there already. He's going to be a great first-line offensive forward for the future. You've got Mason McTavish coming in the wings as well, who could be an excellent second-line center. And you also got Nathan Gauthier as maybe a decent physical third-line center. And to me, the Ducks are not set center-wise. They are, they are perfect. But I think their center situation is actually quite amazing. And sure, Bedard would be tons of fun. And I think alongside Zegers, you could maybe have Zegers on the wing, perhaps, because of that. That would be awesome. And that's why they are still this high. And Bedard would be excellent in Orange County. He'd be so much fun to watch. But I also feel like even if they don't get Bedard, they'll still get an amazing pick. They'll still be in that top five, top three, and still get a great player, another great center like a Leo Carlson or Fantilli. And I think they'll survive either way. They'll be all right, unlike some of the teams that are ahead of them right now. Now, starting us in the top five teams that need Connor Bedard the most, we're going to start here with the San Jose Sharks, a team that would be a pretty interesting fit for Connor Bedard, all things considered. You look at their center situation right now. You got Couture, Lorenz Sturm, Robbins. It's not fantastic, but prospect-wise, they got Bordelow coming up. They got Eklund coming up. Players that I think could be centers, could be wingers. There's a lot of versatility there, but I do think center-wise, the Sharks are in okay position, but obviously not perfect. Connor Bedard would be an excellent addition, but really anybody in that top three. They got a 9.5% chance at first overall, but to me with the Sharks, any center that they can come out with in the top five would be good. Whether it's Van Tilly, whether it's Bedard, whether it's Carlson, any of those guys would be needed for them, but I don't think they necessarily need Bedard. But they will still enjoy him a lot because outside of that, their prospect pool is good, but it doesn't have really a lot of superstar talent. Bedard would be the huge exception. Now going on to number four and the team with a 6.5% chance of that first overall pick in Conor Bedard. I'm not going to lie here. I'm not going to sit here and say that the Philadelphia Flyers don't need Conor Bedard. I mean, look at this. I like Morgan Frost. I love me some Noah Cates. But the Philadelphia Flyers are hot steaming garbage and they need something. Now, let's all agree here, this would be the worst case scenario for Connor Bedard's career. Absolutely. Going to John Tortorella's system, I would absolutely despise in every single way. But let's also not kid ourselves, the Philadelphia Flyers are in bad need of some luck. They are in bad need of something to get them out of this situation. It would likely be kind of a Connor, Bedard, uh, Connor McDavid 2.0 type of situation where it goes to a team like Edmonton and it's just... It's just a team that he needs to revive out of just this absolute desperation and depression era. That is exactly what the Philadelphia Flyers are in. I mean, you could have Cutter Gochi as a center if you really wanted to, but they need, they need a top three pick. And it's never been more obvious. But next up, let's go into the top three and the team that needs Connor Bedard the third most here. Next up, I'm going to go with the Montreal Canadiens. Now, they're in a position where I think they could be eh without Connor Bedard and eh, without a top three pick, but I think it really does need to happen. They are in a humongous need for an elite, elite center. Nick Suzuki is a good one. He's a solid one. I think as a second line center, he would be absolutely perfect, but I don't think he's a first line center on a Stanley Cup winning team. And I think with Bedard and the talent he has, it would revolutionize the options that Montreal has. And if you do do that, you have a top three center core going in the future of Bedard, Suzuki, and Owen Beck. And that is about as perfect as you could possibly get it. They might not need him the most, but they're certainly close. Now going on to the team that needs Connor Bedard the second most and the team that has the second best odds at Connor Bedard, I have the Columbus Blue Jackets. Now, again, looking at their center situation, I think they'd be okay. You could have Kent Johnson as a center in the future, but I'm not really sure how likely that it is with some of the defensive inefficiencies. You got Roslevic there, you got maybe Cole Sillinger, but Columbus's center situation is one that has been a constant problem over these past few years. But they need somebody that can put them back on the map like Rick Nash did in the 2000s. 
And I think that type of franchise face is something that Columbus desperately needs. Sure, a Fantilli and a Leo Carlson could get the job done, but a player like Connor Bedard would be would do so much for that franchise and so much for the team specifically. Having that type of talent alongside players like Ken Johnson already would be monstrous. And especially with the defense they're building, Columbus could be an excellent team with Connor Bedard on the on the tag, on the team, on the roster. But now let's move on to number one and the team that needs Connor Verdar the most. And just like Philadelphia, I'm not going to sugarcoat it because of biases. This team absolutely 100% needs Connor Verdar the most and is without a doubt the Chicago Blackhawks. I mean, look at this. 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 If this is not a team that from day one understood that they needed to get the first overall pick, I have no clue what is. I mean, Jonathan Tate is going to be retiring this offseason. You have Andreas Affa to see you as your first line center. You need Connor Bernard. You need somebody in that top three. Thankfully, Chicago, for them at least, has the third and second highest chances. And I would love to sit here as a person that doesn't really like Chicago all that much and say, oh, Chicago doesn't need him. They need to suck for so much longer. But look at this roster. Look at this roster. Feast your eyes. I know you're trying to look away. Look at this roster. This team needs Connor Bedard. And sure, Fantilli, Carlson, they'd be nice. This team needs Connor Bedard, just like they did Kane and Taves back in the 2000s. It's a serious need. It is a fundamental need. And I don't know how they get out of it if they don't get him. That's the type of franchise face that they have so adamantly builded towards receiving in the draft. And I mean, I would love for them to not get him, but it's probably going to happen. Let's be honest. But those are my picks for who needs Connor Bedard the least and the most. Let me know in the comments down below. What do you guys agree with my rankings? Do you think I missed uh, one? Do you think I should have some teams higher, some teams lower? What would your rankings look like? Let us know down below. And of course, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell for more hockey prospect content just like this. And of course, share the video of all the hockey fans you guys know online and click this card for all my 2023 NHL draft content right in one playlist. My name is Nathan. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.